Praise be to God. We just want to thank you for joining us today and uh, in the study of God's Word. It's such a blessing to be able to come to you with the, the Word of the Living God. And we've been studying in the book of Matthew and talking about the Lord's Prayer and the things that the Lord is doing. But I'd like to take time right now to introduce uh, my wife or let her introduce herself to you so that you can get a chance to meet her. Good morning, saints of God. I just like to say it's a pleasure to be part of Jab the Devil's uh, ministry. And it's been a blessing in my life, and truly it's going to be a blessing in yours as Evangelist Brown comes and gives you the daily word. So be blessed and have a good day. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, sister. And, you know, God is such a great God, and as we study God's word, we know that, 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 that God is okay. He's just a great God. And as we... Uh, look into uh, the Word of God. We've been studying in the book of Matthew and we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer because we believe that it is one of the most powerful prayer uh, that was ever designed and we know that that prayer was designed by the Father because it came through Jesus Christ who is the living Word of the Father. And we have come to the part where uh, in the 13th verse where it said, reads, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise be to the living God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let me say, my brothers and sisters, this particular portion of this prayer can sometimes make us wonder exactly what Jesus meant when he says that we actually need to pray and ask the Father to lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The question arises in the mind of a believer or in the mind of someone who may casually study the scripture why would one have to pray lead us not into temptation are you saying that Jesus Christ or the Father leads us into temptation no my brothers and sisters that's not what it really means uh, and I thank God for the book of James because he clears that fact for us that God never leaves us, lead us into temptation or whatsoever. But look what Paul, James writes in James, the first chapter, in the 12th verse, he, re, he, he writes, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. So James is actually writing here saying that blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So we are called actually in the power of God to endure temptation. And not only in enduring temptation, for when we are tried according to what James writes, he shall receive the crown of life. In other words, in our trial against temptation, we will receive the crown of life and which the Lord had promised to them that love him. In other words, if we love the Lord, we will endure temptation. That's why it's so important for us to establish a relationship with the Lord. And through that relationship, it causes us to be able to endure temptation. The greater the love that you have for the Lord, true love, my brothers and sisters, not a spoken love, not a word love, not a feeling love, but true love and dedication in obedience. As the word said, obedience is always better than any sacrifice you and I will ever make. And James was establishing this fact, and I believe it ties into this particular prayer that he was trying to set forth to let the brethren know that God does not 
tempt us. And he says in the 13th verse, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Praise be to God. God doesn't tempt any man, nor is he tempted with evil. So when one say that God tempted them, it is not the truth. Only Satan will tempt you. And if you are a born-again believer, you have the power and the authority to endure temptation. Now, if you don't know the Lord, you can endure temptation for a season, but ultimately, it will take over you because you don't know the Lord. You don't have the power of God in you. You don't have the authority of God in you. But when you are a born-again believer, hallelujah, you can walk in the grace and the power and the magnificent love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when James write this, he is writing this to believers so that believers will understand that God is with you God is for you. The Father will never forsake you. He will never leave you. And surely, He will never tempt you. But every man is tempted, James writes, when he is driven away of his own lust or his own desires and enticed. You see, when you are driven toward your own lust, what happens is, when you get next to it, there comes the temptation. The word says entice. In other words, you're tempted. You're drawn first by your own lust, but then Satan comes in and then tempts you in order to do that which he wants you to do and allow you now to become a servant of sin rather than what God intended for you to be. My brothers and sisters, this is a process that we walk in. And that's why we walk into maturity. And God is calling you and I, as born again believers, to walk into maturity and to trust the living God and to glorify the living God and to acknowledge the living God. But as we said in our earlier study, we don't only acknowledge Him, but we recognize Him as our Father. Glory be to God. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. His name is to be hallowed. He will keep you from falling. You don't have to give in to temptation because it did not come from the Father. You are tempted and drawn into things by your own lust and then you are enticed, and Satan is the one that does the enticing. In the 15th verse, he says, Then when lust had been conceived, it bring forth sin. Once lust is conceived, sin then is manifested. And sin, when it is finished, when it is completed, it brings forth sin debt, beloved. It brings forth debt. That's what sin does. It brings forth debt. We're dying constantly as we walk in sin. We be drawn away from the things of God. But praise be to the living God. We don't have to walk in sin. I have a study uh, on, on Jab the Devil, uh, YouTube, television station that speaks about that particular thing. Power over sin. We have power over sin. We don't have to sin, my brothers and sisters, but rather we can endure temptation. Glory be to the living God. You know, God will put us into some situations. For instance, do you remember when God the Father uh, told Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, and he did. And God seemingly uh, led them away from the land of the Philistines around them and led them right to the Red Sea. And on both sides, there were a terrain that could not be 
uh, 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 covered or walked on. So in other words, they were trapped when the children, uh, when the Egyptians came after them. They were trapped. They couldn't go to their right, nor their left, and nor could they go forward because the Red Sea was before them. And here was the armies, the greatest army of that time, barreling down upon the hapless children of Israel. Do you remember that story? Now one might say that God led them into that situation, and yes, He did. The Lord will allow us to be tested. They were tested so they might see where their faith was in God. And many times in our life, we are tested to see where our faith is in God. Not to determine that if God is faithful, because God is faithful and He will deliver us, but the Father wants us to know and for us to see how we will respond to adversity when it comes in our lives. That's why things come into our lives, not because God is punishing us, not because He is trying to tempt us into sin, but rather it is for us to know who we truly are. God the Father knew Job when Satan came before him and he said, have you tried my servant Job? God the Father knew that within the heart of Job was the love of God. And when he was tested, though he shook and sometimes, but he didn't give in. For he said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Though he was tempted on every hand by his friends, by his wife, by the circumstances that had taken place in his life with the destruction of his children, yet he did not give in. Yet he stood boldly and confidently. And the word of God declares that he was blessed even more so at the latter part of his life. My brothers and sisters, don't give in to temptation. Remember this prayer. Remember it and what it speaks to your heart and to your spirit. And go out into the earth and let your spirit be filled with the thought that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you.